Yeah. yeah. It's okay. So go to chapter 14. Recording in progress. So go to chapter 14. Approaches to staffing. So, you know, businesses. What well, in business you need to employ workers, especially if your business is expanding. So it means you cannot all do it alone. Yes. You can start your business by doing it all alone. But as soon as you grow, you are expanding, there's need for you to employ workers. So how do you treat your workers? What do you think about your workers? How do you approach them? What do you do with them? What do you think they have to your company? What do you think they are not to your company? Yes. That is what approaches to staffing is about. Yes. So let's just go down and say. Approaches to staffing. In some businesses, the owner is the only person working in the organization. However, as the business grows, there is usually a need to employ people to share the workload. Businesses can be defined according to the number of people they employ. For example, using the definition of size of a business in the European Union and many other countries, small businesses employ between 1 to 49, medium-sized, 50 to 249, and large businesses employ 250 people, 250 people and more. So, what you are saying basically is that you can start up your business alone, taking everything, having the workload yourself, bearing all the workload. But as soon as you expand, the workload would be much than what it used to be. And there's need for you to employ workers. So you are a small business if you are employing between 1 to 49. You become a medium-sized business if you are employing from 50 to 249. Then you are a large business if you are employing from 250 and above. Mm -hmm. That is clear. So they, they mentioned the biggest companies here, but which, that is not where we are going. So we just go down to, we go up again. They said different businesses have different approaches to their staff. Some view our staff as assets, while others view them as cost. These approaches might have implications for the levels of productivity. So as a business, it's a business. So yeah. the employers, how do they see their staff? Do they see them as assets or do they see them as cost? So if they are seeing them as assets, what is the implication? If they are seeing them as cost, then they want to reduce the cost anyway. So what is the implication? Yes, it's like for the ones that are not more than that, don't love to. No, if you are seeing your workers as assets, it means you want to treat them well. You wouldn't want to lose them. Yeah, but if you, are yeah. seeing, if you are seeing them as a cost, yeah. then you want to reduce it as much as possible. So what are the implications? So we start with yeah. staff as assets. Yeah. Staff as an asset. Employers who view their staff as assets will value their employees and have concern for their welfare. Staff will be valued because employers recognize, recognize that their efforts will, be, will help the business to perform more effectively. Such employers will therefore try to meet the needs of employees. This might involve one. So when you are seeing your staff as an asset, it means you want to take care of their welfare because it is only when they are well, it is only when they are good, it is only when they are happy that would reflect in the operations and productivity of your company. So you want to treat them well. You want to care about what they do, how they live. So that means you are seeing them as an asset. Mm -hmm. So what will you do as a firm? Or what will employers that treat or that see their, as their employers, uh, employees as assets. What are those things that they will do? One, they, allow, they, they pay them acceptable remuneration. They pay them accepted, fair salary. Okay. That's the first thing. Reasonable holiday, sick leave, maternity or paternity leave and pensions. They pay them, they allow them for holiday and they give them pensions too. They pay them even for going for vacation. They pay them for that. A safe and comfortable working environment. They make the environment conducive for them. Training so that staff can develop skills and carry out work tasks successfully and safely. So you wouldn't see training as an, as expensive, because you will find that you will feel like if you train them, it will reflect in their productivity. That is, you are seeing your staff as an asset. Job security and opportunities to interact with colleagues. So you let them understand that the future of that company going forward. Is part of they are part of the future of the company. Do you get it? Yeah. And uh, you know when you when your employees understand that they are part of the future of the company, that means there's it's job security. They feel relieved. They know that whatever effort they put into the workplace, it will not go in vain. Mm -hmm. Recognition and professional relationships. Award them, reward them, embrace them, give them accolade whenever they do better. That is. Don't just say, yeah, it's your job, just get it done. Mm -hmm. So whatever they do, recognize that it is, they've put effort into it, they've co they are committed to it. Don't just say it, don't just ignore it as if because you are paying them so that they have to carry out the task. Yeah, yeah. To get the point. Yeah. Clear and effective leadership. Be fair. Show them how to get things done. 
If they are lacking, embrace them. Let them make mistakes. Correct them. Show them. Use leadership's quality with them. Mm -hmm. Don't just don't don't use don't be a manager on top of them. Be a leader. Be a boss. Be a leader. Yeah, be a leader. Yeah. So it means you think more of long term than short term. So whenever they make mistakes, embrace it. Mm -hmm. Don't penalize them often. Yeah. Chances for promotion. Let them understand that when effort is put into it, they, they will be elevated. They have the opportunity to, you know, to improve their position at workplace. Yes. Opportunities to solve problems, work in teams and be creative. Allow them freedom to, you know, to come up with their own initiative. Uh, involve entrepreneurship. Mm. They, uh, embrace them. Then when they come up with ideas, take it, accept it. Yes. Give them the opportunity to express themselves too. Not always downward, make it awkward communication too. Okay. Is it yeah. clear? Yes. That's if you treat your staff as an asset. So what about those that treat their staff as a cost? If employers view their staff as a cost, their focus is likely to be different. Like any other cost, they will try to minimize it wherever possible. This might involve one, paying just the legal national minimum wage. You wouldn't think about benefits. You wouldn't think about bonus. You just mm -hmm. want to pay them what they have been paid. What they are, you, you want to pay them what it's contractual, what is being in their contract, because this is what they do. So pay them contractually. Yes. Two, using a zero hours contract. So that means there's no way you, whatever, you, they have to spend every time doing the job. If they are not doing the job, they're not going to get paid for that. They are not zero hours contract here. Okay. So you only employ them when they are needed. If they are not needed, there's no reason for them to be there. Okay. Uh, do you get it? So, you see them as getting the job done, and that's all. If they are not needed, you don't have the reason to call them. So you only want to call them when they are needed, and you don't even give them, you don't have the flexibility to even try to find a way around things for them. You get zero hour contract then. Yeah. Neglecting invest investment in training, you don't train them. You feel invest training is so expensive. Mm. Using financial incentives to raise pro productivity, you reward them using peace rates. Or, yeah, you yeah. reward them based on what they can do. So you, you try to motivate them with money. Providing minimum legal employee rights in relation to sick leave, holiday pay, and working conditions. So you don't want to go extra mile. So what is being required of them, and what is being required of you to pay for sick leave or for whatever it is, is what you want to pay. You don't even want to consider the nature of their sickness. Maybe it's going to involve more cash than what you are going to give to them. Mm. That's their welfare. You don't care about their welfare. Okay. Using cheap and inferior recruitment methods. Uh, there's one before that. Having penalties for employees who are late and break rules. It is and who incur costs for the business. Mm. So when they are late, you just want as soon as anytime they are just late, you just want to reduce their salary, you just want to cut their wages. It's like just waiting for that moment. Want that moment to come. And you don't even want to think that, oh, this person is just gonna be late for the first time. You don't yeah. think about that. Your procedures and your policies are there, but your procedures, how you carry on with this policy, would, uh, would make us to understand if you are seeing your staff as an, employee, uh, as a, as an asset or as a cost. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yes. Using cheap and inferior recruitment methods, instead of you to, you know, to go through the normal procedures when you are recruiting, you just want to employ whoever you can employ. Mm -hmm. To just fit in the position. You don't want to think if they have the quality or the skills necessary. You just want to employ them. Yes. A lot of schools does that. They just want to employ people, teachers and... Yeah. They don't care if the teacher is having that quality or qualification, mm -hmm. but they just want to make sure that the position is filled. That's it, yeah. So that is when you treat your staff as a cost. Is it clear? Yes. This approach might lower employment cost, but it may also be a false it may also be a false economy. This is because productivity might be lower due to poor motivation. Staff turnover and rates of absence may also be higher. And that's it, you know. When you use Okay, let me just finish. And there may be more conflict between staff and management. Treating staff as cause may leave workers feeling exploited, neglected, stressed, and unhappy in their work. So when you treat your staff, when you see your staff as cost, you want to minimize it as much as possible. Yes, do, go ahead with it. It reduces your cost. But what is the implication? Productivity will fall. Staff turnover will increase. Workers feel unsecured. And at the end of it all, the business will lose out because the output that the business will be seeing will be poor in terms of quality. Is it clear? Yeah. Any question about staff as a cost and staff as an asset? I uh, know. Clear. Okay. We'll go to flexible workforce, I think. Yes. All right.